This is the continuation of our Silas Prime Necromunda campaign in which we have moved out of the Spire of New Babel and into the Wastes and then the Velvet Whip had to crash down and then the games had begun. Citizen Runner, the only chance for a lonely ganger to live a luxurious life up in the stars at Nurdung Station. Okay, so we're going to recap here kind of on what we're playing uh, for our Necromunda campaign. So where we're at with the Necromunda campaign is Silas Prime has been overrun with... uh, zombies and so most everybody has moved out of the uh silas prime and at the same time there's been this like uh like psychic kind of warp storm that has kind of created out of the top of silas prime and so a lot of people are moving away from uh that area and so this is also in a thing at that same time there was a ship that was uh, where we were at in the Nordong station that was called the Velvet Whip, right? Yep. And the Velvet Whip was kind of like a traveling game show style um, ship that would host what we call Citizen Runner, um, that which was a, a, a like a game per se. Uh, like a gladiatorial. Yeah, gladiatorial kind of style game. So uh, this, th- it had fell out of the sky and crashed into kind of like a desolate part of uh, Silas Prime. And then, um, so out of it have kind of starting to grow uh, like a little bit of a, a marketplace and like a camp that's come up. And um, over the last weeks, out of some of the scavenged things, the uh, games have actually started up. And so what will happen here, and, and there's been told that like you can participate in them, and if you do win, um, you will actually be able to get uh, certain prizes, and one of them is even um, transport off of uh, Silas Prime onto the uh, Nordung Station thing, So which a lot of people are trying to uh, participate. So we have a few um, different options here kind of see on these these are actually some psychic uh like servidors where uh people can watch like cycle psychically through them to kind of like watch the games and then we have a part of our gang so my gangs is going to be the uh uh my goliath but my orcs that we have there so have uh, my champion and then have a stemmer. This is just a, a ganger. I also have a uh, another champion uh, with the gun, a couple of the bullies, and then a prospect there. So This is my uh, leader here, Sagan. Um, my one of my champions, um, Snake, and uh, just a, a hive scum, McFly, mm-hmm. and then uh, a bunch of hive scum over here, um, various uh, auto guns, and then a another champion with a, a long rifle. Okay, and you're playing the Outcast rules, right? Yes, I and, Outcast game. And so his uh, all of his uh, leader and champions are all psychers too, yeah, right? Yeah, we're the Wizards of War. Nice. So that's good. So this is your you're playing an outcast gang also too, right? Yeah. And this so, is your champion. Your so this team. is my champion, yeah. And then I have uh Are your leader? Yeah, he's your leader, right? I put two champions out here though. Okay. Uh yeah, he's my my leader. Or no, he's my leader. The guy with the uh the thing is the champions aren't great. Or he's my champion. Okay. And so they are, and then you're playing an outcast gang, and mm-hmm. then your stuff is loosely affiliated with the remnants of kind of like a kind imperial. Of, he's probably actually guard. Uh, he's actually probably wanted by the imperial, imperial guards. Imperial okay, guard, but... so there's a couple of like just left over that are uh, not necessarily keeping the peace, but yeah, and the Ashers yeah. have 
wandered out to see if they can. Yeah, the rock band. Yeah. Got it. All right, so my gang here was here looking into this. They'd found some, there was some, like an orc idol that this gal was selling over here, and so they were looking at it. Then all of a sudden, there was this Multiple orc idols, like, gang. Like at the uh, Empire State Building or the yeah. Tower of Pisa, there's like 30 of them. Ah, nice. Various sizes and shapes. So he just proceeded to kill her and so we kind of got some bloodlust and so he my stemmer just decided to charge him kill um and killed him in the meantime so things start to get a little crazy and we're hearing a sound uh of something over top and then all of a sudden he decided to shoot my stemmer and then it was on and so then we moved up to shoot at them uh hit him and then he moved back there, kind of in a little bit of a gunfight. Meanwhile, Sagan over here is being sneaky, just <laughs> hiding way over here. there. Uh, these Escher gals have just kind of moved out and kind of moving away. So that's where we're at. And this is like uh, eight minutes. <laughs> so we got some serious <laughs> stuff happening. So a bike, the bike thing started, came on from there um, at the end of last turn. I didn't film that. And then we have, uh, let's see what else is going on. So like, so this is actually some lights that come up and like a thing to count down like the, uh, uh, the game beginning and everybody's kind of cheering. We have that. It's kind of started its engines up a little bit. And then basically we have some things kind of just moving out of the way. Uh, what had happened over here was there was the two kind of, I don't know, like skeleton right. guys. Yeah, the Ravagers uh, that assaulted, tried to assault my guy. And he just turned around and like killed each one of them. And then all of a sudden this guy like popped out. And like so we had really a split decision because orcs just keep it simple. So it's like high or low and to go that way. So we went over here. He tried to charge, couldn't. He went over, shot, shot that guy over there. And then this orc just, he stood up and was bloodlust to try to go get those guys. Uh, but in the meantime, at the end, he was the only one in the middle of the road. And this guy came through and basically hit him, knocked him down, and this knocked the guy off on the bike. And then over here, we had some exciting stuff. So these guys moved over, shot, shooting over here. And then he did a psychic power and mind controlled that guy to shoot his own guy. Didn't kill him, but just knocked so him So I'm going to make an intelligence check to see if we can determine that you, we know <laughs> you did that or not. So we do. Nope. We know we were... Nope. <laughs> All right, so we're at the point now where I think the games are beginning to, to start. So at the end of this turn, we're now getting into the games. And what had happened here was these guys were kind of just moved out of the way. They moved down. This had moved up a little bit. And then uh, he was angry, so killed the guy riding that. And um, he got some cover and then shot at the merchant that kept shooting at us over there and killed it. And then that was, uh, that's about it. Okay, so this is the game. We've all now moved up here. This was where <laughs> we're hanging out. Now we've all getting ready to participate in the game. So some of the rules of the game is that there are all these booby traps. So like this is uh, a saw 
that can that will go back and forth at the end of the turn if you're on there. These are saws like you got to jump over. Um, there is some fans. If you land on them, you can do initiative check and potentially it could blow you off. So like there's spikes that will actually just outright kill you or you could fall into this ooze, which like pins you. Um, there's doors that you gotta like try to open through initiative checks. Um, these are like a concussion kind of force thing. So if you go through them, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, it hits, it's a 50-50 to hit 50, you. 50-50 to and hit you. Hit, you lose two initiative. And you lose two initiative, okay. And then um, we, as we go through here, there is a control console where if we potentially we get to that area, we could uh, turn some of these things on or off. And then there's this mysterious area that we don't know. Um, so we're gonna go in turns and everybody's gonna go at once. There is a thing rule where like in this area, we can't necessarily shoot like across here or across there, right? The kind of um, that hazard stripe. Yeah, like that shoot hazard. Either way across. Can't it. shoot across that hazard stripe. So, um, all right. So, uh, so here we go. This is, so Snake came in. He got a, a double move as far as to uh, uh, go in. He made his, um, so he went past that one. On that, that knocked him into here, and he was able to get up and move over. Uh, next, um, he moved in. And then he went over and then on here, tried to jump over that, but then it knocked him back. Um, then over here, I moved in and was able to move over to that way and was facing him. And then leader came in and plasma pistoled uh, me, so knocked me down. Oh, I'm, I'm out of action, so I'll have to roll for that too. And then um, over here, uh, he came in and just moved up to maybe be close to him, even though he's pinned. And then my guy came in over here to shoot at him and then missed. Um, all right. Round two. <laughs> so, uh, what? So, my guy ended up not getting back up, and uh, Sagan proceeded to come over and coup de grace. And then I tried to have my leader come in, and I uh, was going to charge him, but due to his fearful aura because he's a psyker, I failed my will check and then couldn't do anything. So, I was just stuck there. Um, my. Uh, my ganger, I had to try to shoot uh, this ganger here, pinned him, didn't do any damage to him though. And then uh, the, he tried to move, flew over there off the fan, he moved back over there. Um, he came in, went up here, shot down, killed my ganger. So like, uh, and killed him. And so both of them, the results though, I think it was a 14 for that guy and a 12 for this guy. And then he came up and tried to shoot at him. And then that was, I think, about it. Oh, uh, over here. So Snake went through the concussion um, thing, went through here, and made an intelligence check to come out over there. So he's pretty much in the lead. Okay, so once again, I got initiative, and I tried to charge his... Uh, Psyker and I failed my will. I rolled like a three, so he was stuck there two turns in a row. Um, so over here, uh, these guys group activated. He, uh, the leader over here, ended up moving in this area. He got up, shot at him, 
which um, uh, made him go out of action. And there, uh, we still have to roll for him. He ended up moving up and did the plasma pistol again to this guy, which uh, took him out of action. Um, up over here, he tried to jump the saw blade and failed his initiative check, so it did a damage to him. So just pinned him and then uh, minus a wound here. Um, he just kind of moved up over here, not wanting to go on those because those saw blades will move once you're on there. The whole okay, uh, why don't you roll for your out of action guy? So he just kind of moved over there in the muck. He's still uh, stuck there. He um, moved just over here to shoot. Sorry, um, at him. So uh, I moved up, shot, pinned him, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, he was down and so couldn't get shot by him. And so he just moved up onto there. He had a choice. So he stood up, fired the plasma pistol, missed at him. And then um, we had him go try to jump this instead of shoot him. And then got here, got another wound, but it was only a flesh wound. So lost two. And then he got up, shot at Sagan, but then uh, went out of ammo and missed. And I, I'm pretty sure you didn't do him. That was last turn. Was it? Let's double check. Okay. Yeah. So we got to still do that guy. No, that's... So Here Snake was able, it, he didn't go. So he was able to move through there. His intelligence check, he's, he has an eight intelligence, yeah, right? He's so he rolled like 11 he's or something. Genius. So he moved through uh, there and he's now in this crazy pit. And all these guys are like moving over, chanting uh, for what's going to happen. All right, so we uh, proceeded. We we're able to try to charge Sagan, which was there, but we were a little short on our charge, and we actually made it over the fan. Sagan then charged me, uh, did uh, damage enough to almost take me out, but I just did a uh, just got a flesh wound from it. So I attacked back and uh, made him go out of action, but uh, couldn't coup de gras because it wasn't my turn. So then um, he proceeded at the end of the thing for his recovery check, rolled, and uh, went out of action himself and got a 62. So over here, he uh, went through this, tried to shoot at the orc. Um, I nerved his steel, and so I was fine. Um, he climbed up over to here and then rolled recovery, so he's back up. And then we got, uh, he moved over to try to move in front of that door. He does have a couple wounds. There was the other guy, and so rolled over here, and then killed himself on that saw blade. So another casualty. Um, over here, Snake tried to do a weird power, the quickening, uh, but didn't go off. Uh, this monstrosity, what's his name? Well, no, then he shot him in the face. Yeah, he the, shot him in the face, and the then uh, did one wound and pinned him, or did two uh, wounds. He has one left. And then what's this guy's name? The Kraka. The Kraka. The Kraka came out of there. Um, and that's it. So to go over some stuff that we had here, uh, my guy just uh, had moved up over to here, kind of ran through that. Um, he proceeded to go through the door and moved over there. Um, we had uh, him just kind of double moved. He moved up through this and shot him and uh, penned him. And then uh, over here, he uh, moved up and shot, and I think, 
him? I don't think he hit him. Did he, he didn't hit him? No. When you shot him. And then he just moved up over here next to these traps, but uh, made his initiative so it didn't go off. Okay, so the end of this turn, what had happened is uh, crack, cracker here, cracka, cracka, yeah, so um, snake had, had uh, assaulted him, charged him, and then did a thing, but only did a flush room, right? Flush room. And so then he attacked back and uh, made snake go out of action. On his turn, he um, could have grabbed him and basically like picked him up whoa, and threw him into the bear trap and killed him. Um, over here, the other, uh, this guy over here had ran up over here, didn't make his thing to go through the door, so was stuck there. So this went eight spots and ran him over and basically killed him. Um, I ended up moving uh, through the door, moved up over there. This guy moved up through the door. He moved right behind him. That's kind of where we're at. All right, Ouch. so we, let's see what had happened. So I, I moved over here and then um, I moved up and shot, right? At uh, the yep. champion that was here and he um, got pinned. He d decided to charge him and just annihilate him with his chain sword. Mm -hmm. um, over here, didn't do anything because we didn't go in there. The saw moved seven, is now heading back this way. I think that's all that we had, right? Initiative. Okay, so I was able to move in, jump through this part over here, the smoke part. I got my stub cannon, fired at him, uh, hit him, knocked him down, and put him out of action. At the end of turn, he rolled and got uh, back up, so he has another flesh wound on him. And then over here, he tried to move and open the door and failed. In the end, Urak, the champion of Urak Scrappers, was victorious over Kraka, the gladiatorial orc, in the first games of Citizen Runner.